All right, breaking bread. There's a bit of a pun behind here. Obviously, breaking bread is about coming together, but we're also trying to break away from bread in this instance, where hospitality, maybe it doesn't always have to be centered around our dining room table and food and our typical way of understanding this value. And maybe we can practice hospitality differently during the pandemic, but stay true to the core ideas that are behind it. Um, so the way I'd like to go through this as I scroll down is I'm going to call upon some of you to read. Um, you can definitely opt out and say pass and there's no harm with doing so. Uh, so Shosh, can I ask you to unmute yourself and start reading this first slide? Hospitality, some of our own definitions. Great. Hospitality, the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers an act that contains the purity of altruism and the essential nat nature of offering someone something they need, the fine art of making a person feel at home, the Jewish imperative of Chanasa or Achim, welcoming guests with examples found in countless biblical stories. Okay, so the process of moving from thin to thick of like, what is this idea, which means anything to anyone, and we have all our own associations and images that come to mind, starting to narrow it down and saying in this exploration, we're going to look at hospitality with these four things in mind. Um, and as we start to narrow in a little further, we have one other beautiful quote from the Midrash Rabbah from one of our Judaic texts, which says, Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav, Hospitality is more important even than welcoming the presence of the Shekhinah, of the divine presence. So clearly prioritizing this idea, this value, um, and there's fascinating interpretations why, but just in a nutshell, right in front of us, shalom in the backdrop, this is paramount to who we are and how we practice. Robin, can I ask you to read the following three if statements? We're gonna try and turn this into a question, if. If hospitality is a home-based activity, if home is now our home and oh, if home is now our home and our work and our school our shul our gym our restaurant i didn't read those in order if pandemics limit how we can provide for the stranger or welcome a guest okay so we're assuming right now like if these are all true let's you know in terms of like a theorem let's accept this for a minute this is our reality right now this is how we understand or we typically understand what hospitality is. It's starting to get a little bit complicated. And the core question we'll ask ourselves is then, then how can we be hospitable during Corona times? Let's assume all those other things as truths and let's figure out how can we actually do this? And therefore we're going to begin our exploration. Sometimes we need a framework for how to put our ideals into action. And we're gonna begin by taking a look below at the eight levels of hospitality a hierarchical ladder for hosting, which is based on Maimonides' eight levels of staka of charity. So a bit of background about this. Maimonides, um, obviously a, a, a great Jewish thinker and writer um, and philosopher and doctor and many other things, um, is one of the things that he is most known for. Uh, in addition to his codification, one of his, his most things is his eight levels of tzedakah. It's, it's one of the most commonly quoted um, texts or ideas when we talk about how to prioritize and how to give and what is the nature of giving and who do you give to and under one circumstances and really outlines like what is a framework? What, what is like the best, most altruistic way to give versus what is like the lowest, worst way to give something, which is really begrudgingly and because I have to and kind of outlines what what these eight things are. And what we're about to do now is go into a learning session for 20 minutes, which could take 20 minutes. We'll do a bit of a shortened version, which is a contemporary text study. Um, and beyond the text study, we're actually going to jump immediately into application. So instead of living in the realm of ideas and trying to figure this out, which we would normally do in a text study, we're going to jump into something. And the request I'm going to make is the best way, or it's more of a suggestion, the best way to try and understand this, um, this text is by trying to see ourselves in it. And the more we can try and relate real-time examples of what this, where we might have experienced this, the clearer this hierarchy will be. So if everyone can please click on this um, source sheet, so out of my shared screen for the time, um, and now into, you can stand or share my share screen if you would like, but I'm going to ask you in a minute to do something on your own. <coughs> um, Eva, is this the one where we have to click on the Sparks Adobe? Is that this, where the, you should be in the Adobe Sparks? Correct. That's what I was reading. The Sparks Adobe. 
for the time being, I will get out of that and I will just share this resource though, in case you're still on shared screen mode and you can see what I see. And this is a, a source which is called the eight levels of staka and the eight levels of hospitality. So on the left side, this left column, we have the text directly from Maimonides. Nothing has changed over here. These are his eight levels. We are not going to focus on that now, but should you with your learners want to get into that, you have a lesson over here. Um, you can analyze it, you can learn it, and you can question the hierarchy and as such. There's a much more contemporary take on this. Rabbi Oded Mazor um, offered an interpretation, which is a direct parallel to each of his levels saying, if we have a ladder for how to give charity, certainly we can make a parallel for how we should be hosting people. Just as we know how to give, how do we open and how do we give in this other way? And, um, and the, the nature of the narrative that they take in this document on this one sheet is constantly balancing the role of the guest and of the host. So the way that we're starting to judge how powerful uh, or how hospitable or how, how powerful an act of hospitality it is, is in the end of the day, like are the host and the guest truly in a partnership? Have they become, and we'll read this number one at the top, are they truly forming like an amazing, um, is there a great chemistry? Um, versus all the way on the bottom, which I'll start off at, like the lowest level is somebody who, who hosts begrudgingly. One level lower, the lowest is I'm at number eight, somebody who hosts totally begrudgingly. An example of someone who hosts totally begrudgingly, and this is what I mean by seeing ourselves in the text, where you have this space, you could theoretically print this out and have your learners print it and fill this out, would be to um, you know, somebody who hosts a Shabbat meal and it's very clear that they just wanna get through it and they want to have their nap and they're not interested in this small talk and they feel like it was an obligation. Like you invited me, so we had to invite you back and it's just, it's clear that they don't want to be doing this. And we've probably all been in that situation before, either as host or as guest. But that's, in my interpretation of this, what it could mean to host begrudgingly. If I go all the way to the top, I'm going to highlight step number one, and then I'll choose one more to kind of go into as an example. And then I'll give you some time to do something on your own with your screens off just to get into this text a bit more. But um, according to Rabbi Mazor, the highest level of hospitality is written next to number one. Um, Rabbi Michelle, can I ask you to please read number one? Wait, you're on mute. I'm unmuting you. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, I can't see it though. Can you make it a little bit bigger? Ah. I'm looking at your shared That's screen. Ah, uh, is that better? I zoomed yeah, in. That, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, you want number one, right? Right here, there are eight levels. There are eight levels of hospitality, each one greater than the next. The greatest level, higher than all the rest, is for a host to form a partnership with their guest until they strengthen their spirit, until they feel at home and can become a host. Of this it is said, let them live by your side. Welcome into your house so that your guest will not feel like a guest and you will not feel like a host. Thank you. Does anyone have either an example of this or an interpretation of this that can help us understand what is being described as the most like powerful form of hospitality? What is being said here? I think, oh. Um, Hello. Who's this? Ah, oh, no, I know. <laughs> I, so I think that one of the best examples of that is empowering your, your, your guests. Like when, if you have people over and by, by giving them an opportunity to contribute to the meal, meaning like if someone says, how can I help? And you say, oh, can you put the glasses on the table? Um, rather than saying, oh, no, 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 you're, you're a guest. You don't have to do anything. Like ultimately right away they feel like, oh, I, I, there's a sense of belonging. Um, and part of the, I'm part of the family rather than, uh, you know, just saying that they're like too much on a pedestal kind of thing. Um, because the second we look at them as like, oh, you're, you're the guest tonight, I'm do, serving you. It's like, it, it's, a, it's a little bit condescending. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, so that example of you're coming here, but like uh, there's, no, there's no real difference in, in our statuses and therefore you can set the table and thank you for the flowers you brought, but do you mind choosing a vase from the shelf over there and just putting them in something? Like you, you, can, you can do that. That's, I totally trust you and it's fine. I mean, you, whatever can happen to equal the playing field right away. It's great. I also picture the, um, 
those, these are the meals that just go on for like forever, but they're timeless. Like time passes so quickly and they're sitting there like, what? It's like five o'clock already. How did that happen? You know? And, and we still have so many more things to talk about. And like, I'll follow up later with this. And it's all of those like very genuine, genuine interest and like this was amazing for both and it happened to be at my house as the host or your house as the host and it didn't matter because we just got so enamored with each other it's like a partnership that happens if we i'm going to highlight one more of these let me zoom out for a minute and then and then move down um kind of at random here we go so uh number four i find very interesting um Aliza, do you mind reading number four? One level lower. Ah, uh, you're on mute, sorry. Can you unmute yourself? Thank you. So one level lower is a guest who knows their host, yet the host doesn't know their guest. Like the host who constantly talk about themselves, but do not pause to listen to what their guest has to say okay has anyone either been in that situation or give a real life exit like what what is this <laughs> describe the scenes i think it could be like someone who's like well known in the jewish world you know like a, a rabbi or a, or a great teacher or that like you know you've been dying to like be in their presence and and be in their home so you mm -hmm. you don't know them but you know them and they don't but mm -hmm. they don't know you and they're just sort of like performing mm -hmm. totally this is the host who's holding court marty did you unmute yourself you've got something to say this is in many times the first day of camp <laughs> that tell me you know, more kids kids will know who the uh, supervisor leadership or returning veteran person may be and they've entered that person's world in their sphere, their division, whatever the word is. But um, the, the big shot, if you will, doesn't know who these new folks are, thus he or she doesn't know what their needs could possibly be yet. And so there isn't, the, the, it has to be lower level because you're not, you're not at that, partnership being referred to at the top level, at least mm -hmm. not yet. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing example of bringing it to programming. It's beyond hosting at a meal, but actually hosting hospitality is yeah. far beyond anything that has to do only with food. Um, this is the host who is holding court. Like it's the person, it's all about them, um, either because of their prestige in the community or their self-perception of their prestige. <laughs> um, it is it is them strutting their stuff and who they are and just saying welcome. And I'll give a real life example for a minute of something that will never I will never forget because it was traumatic for me. I was invited to a sheva brachot um, to one of the meals after friends of ours had gotten married. And uh, it was, you're the, it's customary to bring new faces, people who weren't at the wedding to um, engage in these meals. It's constantly bringing a joy to the, to the newlyweds. And we didn't know the hosts well, and they weren't the hostess friends, but we showed up and we were the new faces. And it was a crowd that we didn't particularly belong to in terms of age, in terms of, and it, it, we didn't belong. And, um, and I'll never forget that the host had, it was on a Shabbat uh, day and everyone had washed their hands in preparation for eating the bread. So there was silence as was customary. Um, and we were waiting for him to, to the host to say the blessing. And then afterwards we could talk. And the host says, aha, everyone's out because I have not yet washed my hands. So I'm going to take this opportunity to, to talk and to welcome and to, but he was putting on a show. It was a complete act and went on and on and on. I just, I will never forget that. And this is number four. Like he didn't care who was in the room. It was very much about him and everyone being able to see him for what he had. So that's just kind of a real life example for me. Um, we're going to spend just a couple more minutes on this uh, resource before moving on in the actual spark and in, in, in the, the activity, which is a prompt you can do with your learners as well. Um, oh, I forgot to show you the facilitator's guide. Remind me to show you the facilitator's guide. Um, the, uh, something you can do for, you know, as you facilitate this is um, 
have learners um, focus on one piece of it instead of getting through the entire text with a very specific prompt. So I would do as follows. I would say each person should be looking at this sheet and should choose one of the numbers. It could be at random, one through eight, or it could be something that caught your eye. And either with the screen off, so you can just focus, um, not on anyone's face, but only on this, or you can keep your screen on. Take the next two or three minutes to just review it and to ensure that you, or to attempt to see yourself in it, fill out that example. Like really give, just like I gave a clear example of a time that I experienced number four, not theoretically where might you experience, but where did you experience this um, number one through eight? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna pause for two minutes. I'm gonna zoom this out so it's a little bit bigger. And those of you who can see, can see. And otherwise you can log on to this, not through the shared screen, but through the actual Spark and kind of uh, delve in. I'm gonna pause for, for two minutes and then you're welcome to turn off your camera and then we'll come back on. It'll take about 30 more seconds or so. When you're ready, you can turn your, your camera back on. That'll be my indication. Okay, so while some of you are still finishing up, you'll turn your cameras on when you're with me. Um, for those of you who are back, I just, I wanna hear from one person, just one person, either an interpretation, but then a real example of one of the stages in here, like bring us into your scene. Where did you experience hospitality anywhere along this ladder? I'll go. Um, I you, picked Mr. number five, cause I kind of liked that one. So I thought number one is, is a little bit, maybe over the top. So I like number five. Um, and I guess, you know, my role as the rabbi, we have a small congregation and there were some people that were new, you know, and they came for Shabbat. And after a couple months when, when it was, I think it was Sukkot is always a good time to invite people over because it's like, there's a reason and it's an icebreaker. So I invited them to our house for Sukkot. So that kind of fits in with, um, I invited them, they weren't seeking to be hosted, but because I invited them, it really built a relationship. Like, I think they were really, you know, it wasn't just going out to dinner somewhere. It's like, I invited them into my home and it was a really nice mm -hmm. experience. And from that, you know, we became good friends. So, and it wasn't, I wouldn't think of it as a hierarchy one way or another. I just liked them and wanted to get to know them mm -hmm. better and bring them into my home with my family and um mm -hmm. i kind of like that one and there's no expectations you know they, if it didn't go well then i wouldn't invite them again but it, you know it was kind mm -hmm. of a non-threatening 
um, they weren't, you know, they just were thrilled to be coming to shul for something. So they found a new, you know, congregation and it was kind of a nice way to reach out to people. Beautiful. So the d distinction between that and number six, which is both, you know, have to do with the host inviting the guest in would be that same example. But let's say you had known, you had heard from someone in the community that somebody was lonely, hadn't received invitations, new to the community, seeking something out, uh, wrote on Facebook, looking for a meal this weekend, meaning made that initial thing. And with that same grace, you opened up your home to them. From the guest perspective, they might think to themselves like, oh, they heard my calling, but I had to put myself out there. The situation you're describing, which is one level higher, is you, you noticed that they could use an invitation without them making that expression whatsoever. And that's where the hierarchy, at least between five and six, come in the way I interpret this text. Um, thank you for that. So we're going to move on to the next piece in the spark. Um, and I'm going to invite you to do a bit of a shift in mindset. Of, you know, Often when we think of hospitality, we immediately go to host mindset of how are we a host and how do we create a culture of hospitality. Um, and, and I want to flip it to the guest, meaning in this text, we can also look at all of these examples from when have we been a guest in any of these scenarios. We can also ask when have I been a host in any of these scenarios, but we're about to turn to the guest mindset. Um, give me a minute as I deal with my tech. So I'm stopping that screen. And to do a brief catch up for something I forgot to do, <laughs> I'm going to show you where we are based on showing you what a program guide looks like. So pretend you saw this in the beginning. This will be available before anything, which is a one pager. And it pretty much says this is what we're exploring. All the materials you have are here, and if you need scissors and paper and glue, it will tell you that as well. And then it says you've got an intro, a 20 minute, 20 minute, 25 minute. It lines what they are. There's a learning, there's a game, and there's a challenge. Um, it gives you a clear idea of how you're going to wrap up with some questions and how we're going to open with some definitions. Um, and then there are different suggestions as well. Of um, Even if you don't open any activities, you can um, just get through some of these questions of what does it mean to host during this pandemic and maybe lead a philosophical discussion about that. <laughs> and that might be how you want to use your spark. Um, and obviously, we always seek for feedback. Um, that's how this came to be, this program guide. So any insights or advice you have, we definitely do take seriously. So where we are in the arc of this spark is we've done a bit of an intro, we just did a learning, and we're about to go into a game. You'll see where it fits in the narrative, but from the facilitator's perspective, what we're trying to do is to improve hosting capabilities and sensibilities by playing a game, either by yourself or in a group, it can be done either way, to uncover ways that you have treated yourself as a guest over the past few months. And you'll see why we're doing that based on how it fits in our overall story. But that's, that's the next stage of this arc. So let me jump back to our actual spark, which is over here, okay? So we continue on and then we've just learned something. We're wrapping up this chapter and say, well, how can this ladder be relevant today? We've just learned this hosting guide. How is it relevant given our times? What does it mean to show hospitality when you have contactless deliveries and cannot invite people into your home? Number one, um, Robin, can you read number one? To be a host <laughs> starts from within. First and foremost, treat yourself as a guest. Without caring for ourselves, we cannot be expected to care for others. What's behind your green screen? Okay, so this is getting into the thickening. We're saying our interpretation. One thing to think about if hospitality is just like this is very common in the world of staka, of charitable giving, in order to give, you need to know how to receive. In order to host, you need to know how to be a guest. It's a very similar parallel that we're playing with here. Um, and therefore, we're going to test it out. <laughs> um, hospitality bingo, just as you would pamper your guest in your home, play this bingo game to discover if you've been treating yourself as you would treat a guest. So again, I will share my screen, but for those of you who, um, uh, you know what, I'm actually just gonna share my screen for this one. So no need to open it and I'll orient you for a minute. The first thing as a facilitator that you should see is this is a longer packet. It has one page of instruction. Oh, hold on. There we go. It has one page of instructions. And then we have five versions of a bingo board, simply that if you're to play with it, it's the same thing, but just different orders. So if you want to 
say, you know, you've got five learners or 10 learners or however many, you just distribute them evenly. So there's different versions of the, the actual game. And then at the way end, you have a facilitator sheet, which is going to be the calling card. So if you're calling out different things, these are the different um, items or the phrases that appear on each bingo board. It's a package resource, you're ready to go. So how do we play? I'm going back to the top, to the opening instruction. In order to be a successful host, we need to know what it's like to be a guest. And what ways have you cared for yourself over the past few months? This hospitality bingo board will help you recall some of these moments. Hospitality bingo can be played alone or in a group. In order to mark a box on the board, share specific details about how each point was or will be intentionally experienced. I wanna hone in on that for a minute. When we get to them, the idea is what did you intentionally do? Was it an, an added act with heightened awareness of saying, you know what, I'm gonna set my table today even though no one else is around and even though whatever i'm going to do something because that's like that if i were hosted and they set the table there's a great feeling there and therefore i'm doing it for myself so the question is not what did you do but what with a heightened sense of awareness and intentionality what did you either do or planning ahead what's something that i may call off that you'll say i'll check it off but in order to check it off i need to plan ahead and set a goal that i'm going to do this action for myself over the course of the next couple of days, over the course of the next week. So this is a way to try and get some of our learners to um, be more attentive to how they might be uh, caring for themselves in very minor ways, just like they'd like to be treated as a guest in someone else's home, how they might do that for themselves here as well. To play it in a group, there's all sorts of rules. Um, you know, we, you can choose what you can mark, what you can't mark. Uh, we're not going to get into the details now because I want to kind of highlight the resource and not play the game as we, we normally would. Um, and I'll show you a couple of different ways, but it's all written out for you on this guide. So let's say we're looking at this board over here and I call out the following. I say, you know, in my own order, I say, who, um, who put out fresh towels for themselves? Okay, I put out a fresh towel for myself. So somebody may be able to say, you know what? I actually haven't changed my towels in two weeks, <laughs> all right? And then I might think to myself, like, well, if I went to a hotel, like, and I found that there were some, there's something nice about having a fresh towel. Like it does, it links to hospitality in some way or another. So to check it off by either saying, yes, I've done that and I'm aware of it, or yes, I will do it and I'll hold myself accountable to it over the next few days gets us in the mindset of how to actually practice hospitality, okay? So let me read, uh, read one other one, uh, which might be, uh, do, 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 do. I put music on to adjust the vibe and the mood, okay? This is something that clearly when we walk into a space, you notice that you've got that feeling, call it a restaurant, call it an event hall, like there's something great about a dinner party, music has the ambience. Has anyone in this group um, intentionally put on music to adjust their vibe and their mood over the couple months? Yeah, you can just do a thumbs up or a wave just so we see, yes, okay, cool, awesome. So you can either, depending on your rules as you're the facilitator, you can say, if you did that, then you're great. If you did that with a heightened sense of awareness of like, this is what needs to be done, not just because it's my preferred style, but like, it's time for me to care for myself right now. You can make that caveat rule and say like, that's the only indication you're able to check it off. Or you can say, even if you haven't done it, like let's say I haven't done it, I might say, I wanna tick that off. I'm going to be more mindful of that. And tomorrow I'm going to start my morning with about 20 minutes of just good background music to get into my day. And that's, that's a way that I might treat myself with a little bit more um, dignity is the wrong word, but maybe um, care <laughs> and attention. Uh, that, 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 that would be the right word. So I'm going to pause here and open it for some questions or even some other um, uh, recommendations of how you could play this or what you could do with this for your learners, knowing your audience, um, either questions you have or recommendations moving forward, and then we'll move on in a few minutes to the next resource. People are on mute if you're planning on time. If I can't hear you, it's because I. No. Okay. So, 
tell me this, and I, I know I'm oversimplifying the question, but a lot of these things are things that you would say you're supposed to do. So what takes it from the level of, you know, we were raised that way, or you're trying to, you know, mm -hmm. beyond just your house feels disheveled or whatever the case may be. I mean, how do you get, how do I think in my thinking to then convey this to, uh, to an audience or to a learner group mm -hmm. that they should buy into this? For sure. So the design of this, meaning the commonality of some of most of these prompts is that these are things that we may have been raised taught that we should do, but we can definitely get by if we don't do. And in light of being by ourselves and guests not coming in and not needing to showcase anything because they only see what's in this screen over here, it's much easier to, and to care for ourselves and say, I don't have time and I don't have energy and I don't have capacity and I'm burned out and all these other things. It's much easier to say like, I'm not gonna play my view. I'm not gonna set my bed. I'm not gonna do clean my space because it just doesn't matter. So they're important values and actions and there are things that we can continue day by day by moving forward, even if we don't perform them. So they do require an extra level of attentiveness. Anyone else want to offer an interpretation? Robin. Well, it's not really an interpretation, but it's really interesting to think, um, like the one that I'm looking at it, um, I cleaned my space at the end of the day. Like mm -hmm. I do that, I've been doing that, so that when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like I'm waking up in a mess like I'm ready to start my day because I like to mm -hmm. sleep until the last possible minute um but to frame it as being hospitable and like how would I want someone to come into my space it's like how do I want to come into my space uh, correct so I don't know if it, it relates a little bit to what Marty said and like in the back of my mind I'm like I've turned into my mom like no dirty dishes in the sink ever um but it's, it's a neat thought to think about. Because what does that do to you when you walk into that space? Not your own, but someone else's. And you see, wow, this is so orderly. And they cleaned up for me. And they really set my table over here. And I have a workstation to be at. And like, wow, there are fresh towels. And there's a made bed. And dinner is beautiful and all that stuff. Now, it's hospitality. It's something that it's difficult to do on, on that level on a regular basis. Um, however, that heightened attentiveness is something that we can try and exercise. I feel like I'm late to the game in saying this, like a year and a half late, but I think I'm finally understanding like the ideas of values coming in conflict. Like the idea of being hospital, hospitable <laughs> to myself is totally in conflict to a value of whatever, like wanting to live in a mess or not caring. There's something, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, yeah. There's an idea of, if I had to name that an archetypal conflict language, and then we'll get back to the spark, that what, what jumps out to me is the idea of responsibility versus carefree. Mm. Like those are the two things that are, like I wanna be carefree and I also wanna be responsible to myself and I'm pulled in both directions over there. And these are where a lot of these are put to the test. So, you know, how do I relate to that? Very cool. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next resource. We only have 10 minutes left, but this is obviously a very adaptable resource that you can use even by not playing bingo, but by using these as prompts and having a discussion about them. Um, let's get back to where we are. All right, um, David, can I ask you to read point number two? The essence of hospitality is nourishing people in physical or other ways. Food is a constant in Jewish life. If we aren't fasting, we are blessing and discussing and consuming food but hospitality goes beyond eating. It conjures up the sensual nature of food, of being sustained and cherished. And maybe the sensation of togetherness and support is what we're craving most. Okay, so another spin, another thick expression of like, what does this value mean? Hospitality means nourishment. Nourishment often comes in the form of the physical, but there are other ways that we can nourish and be nourished as well and therefore maybe what we want to explore is um, that can we get that sensation of togetherness and support that might be that hospitality that we're actually craving 
So in order to uh, do this, we obviously turn to Priya Parker. Let's start with tips for foodless hospitality. And in this video, Priya Parker, author of The Art of Gathering, describes gatherings, and I love this, as an opportunity to mark, to witness, to remember, and to invent. This is a six minute clip. It's something you can either, I mean, you should watch it on your own time, but if you were to learn this with your, your learners, you can send them the link to this before, even if it, you just take the URL outside of the Spark and say, watch this in advance of coming to, and that saves you seven minutes too. But in this clip, what you'll see is she gives some amazing tips for things that you need to do. For example, your party and your gathering need to have a purpose. You need to know what it's doing for you as a host. What need is it fulfilling? What are the rules that you're gonna, like very clear, points that you'll be able to see when you watch this video on your own time. But our question is, how can we take her advice and begin applying it to virtual hosting? How do we do it in this time that's a, we're in a pandemic? So the activity, and this is, you'll start noticing this as in the, the latest evolution of Sparks is usually the final activity is a challenge. In our M squared language, this is the concrete exploration. <laughs> like this is where we put it to the test. So in its most real thick way, like, all right, host. <laughs> the challenge is be hospitable and host a party. Let's see if you're up for it. Um, are you up for, for planning and hosting a virtual gathering? So in order to do so, um, Esther, can I ask you to read this paragraph to do so? Sure. To do so, we turn to the timeless tradition of the hostess diary, a leather round book where home hosts chronicle, chronicled who was invited and what was served and what was discussed and what unique touches were added for guests. In this hospitality challenge, you will have a chance to plan a gathering of your own by completing a page from our hostess diary, according to Parker's guidelines. Okay, so I'm going to click an example of a host diary just so you can see what it looks like. These go way, way, way back. It was a very, you know, the big leather bound thing, the cursive, the heavy writing, the philanthropist is, is noted on the bottom. Like, like the people hosting the dinner parties are thinking all the things about the place settings and are we doing small talk and what's our gift that we're going to give and like really planning every detail over here. This is like showing it's a party with the purpose. So working off of this template or this idea and it's like a fa fascinating history. Just Google um, hostess diaries. Who's writing these and what they look like and what they were chronicling is just like so, so mind boggling and really interesting. Um, and then our challenge becomes, all right, let's, let's put it to the test. So we click this link and you would get to this three page resource guide. The first page is to try and summarize what happened in Priya Parker's video clip. So these are a bit of the cliff notes. Here are some tips that will help you get into the mindset. Number one, there always needs to be a purpose. What is a need in your life right now that by bringing in a specific group of people, it might be addressed. You have to name your gathering so learn so guests know what to anticipate. Like this is a re cohort reunion, so they know what's coming over here. Um, there's going to be rules, what's allowed and what's not, so people don't have an assumption that they're people don't come with a false impression. Um, often the host should prepare an opening ritual to get everyone in the spirit of gathering and really hold the space. And Priya Parker describes a really cool toasts challenge in the clip where she invites guests to tell a story from the past few months that no one else has heard and how it has affected their lens on the world. It's getting a little deeper and more vulnerable, but it's something everyone does and you can make a ritual out of it and give a, some type of toast. Additionally, you can do hospitality bingo. <laughs> you have an activity if you wanna play that. Um, and you would ask your learners to actually, this is A, for you to host for your learners, but also for your learners to host for them, for their friends or, or whoever they would want to gather, their family. Um, and therefore, on the next page, there's a template for virtual hosting where you can put hospitality to the test. Without going into all the details, you'll see that these are some of the basic questions, that the, the tips from Priya, but people should print this and actually fill it out. And like, are they up for the challenge? And then the final page of this is like, a sample template, we filled it out. Now we intentionally fill this out from the mindset of a teenager. So it's clear that it's not just for the educator to host their class, but a team saying we're having a camp reunion because we're obviously not gathering this summer and we want to joke and have fun and reconnect because it's been a while. And we're calling it the Apache Kings Live On because that's an inside joke that we have. So that's going on our invitation. And the people who are coming are my 12 friends and our two counselors. And what I'm gonna do is try and recreate the feeling of being at camp. So I'll take 20 images from scenes and I'll send them out and people will put a virtual background and I'm gonna ask them to wear their t-shirt and we're gonna try and create this atmosphere. And the way I'll get the party started is ask each person to take a minute to share a story or a memory of something that took place where that scene was, where that virtual scene was that was in the background. 
hands. And that's a way to start getting back into that mindset. And we have some rules and it kind of, it goes on. So this is obviously like a simplified attempt at, at filling this out. But the more details that you can give to it, the more we're saying like, Hosting, hospitality takes intention. It takes planning. What are you doing? What are you not doing? How are you a good guest? How are you a good host? And it really begins to culminate some of these learnings and, and package them together and say, are we up for it? Like, what, 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 who am I as a host? Um, let me pause and open for some questions or comments. I just want to tell a quick story. I had, I had a birthday at the end of March and I decided to host a party. And I, I hosted a travel party because I love to travel. And so everyone had, everyone was asked to share a story or uh, about a place that they had been in the last two or three years. Um, and everyone came with like the, you know, one of my friends came with, with, uh, with um, she's a skier. So she had ski goggles on, other people wore t-shirts, <laughs> wore hats, backgrounds, and, it, and we all traveled. We all traveled to all the places that people went to and it was <laughs> fabulous. It was so fun. We loved it. Amazing. Implicitly, did you do some of these points? Like, was there a name for? Was it Esther's birthday? Was it travel the world with Esther? Like, what? Tell us more. I mean, now that I'm looking at this, I realized that I did all of it without sort of understanding that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Not all of awesome. it, a lot. Of it, yeah. Amazing. Good for you. Awesome. So, so this is something. So she was yeah, the she was the opening keynote speaker at the last conference we went to at the uh, ACA Tri State Upstart. Conference, uh, um, okay. and she was. Awesome and had a big room, and it was kind of our last big event before everything got shut down three days later, and we haven't had anything. So we've been practicing her things in in isolation. So you're you're right on track, Keith. Amazing. And have you found it helpful? Yes. Uh, we got the book afterwards, and we're through it. I've tried to use some of the tips to engage our people. So it's not awesome. just another Zoom. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's great. So what you can rely on from these sparks and what we're trying to be mindful of is giving a template for the ideas that learners will know what's being asked for of them and that they can actually put them in a specific space and they test it out. And as educators, you'll call upon them and say, next week, I want to hear how the party went, or I want to know what worked and what didn't work. And I want to know um, if you had to rate where you were on the Maimonides ladder based on the relationship between host and guest in that call, what number would you give them? One through eight. And like really try and work some of these resources in totally different ways that just put together a much more coherent narrative to what we're thinking about with hospitality. So I'm mindful of time. We're going to go and wrap up the um, kind of the end of the spark. And as you know, the, the, for the most part, sparks are designed to be 60 minute activities. So you, they can be done obviously much shorter if you don't go through the whole thing, but you can count on going through the whole thing in 60 minutes and they can definitely take much longer if you want to dedicate more time to it. Um, but as we start to wrap up, you know, looking for some tips and tricks from hospitality rock stars, we've got you covered. There are some amazing um, quotes over here from different people about hospitality. I love um, Harper Lee saying, that boy is your company. And if he wants to eat up that tablecloth, you let him, you hear. So there's just really great tips about how to get into to the hosting mindset. You'll read this on your own as you go through, um, through the spark. But we always try and wrap up a spark with a resolution, with like, how is this coming together, which sometimes is much more of a beautifully tied package and often is crystallized questions that might say, as a result of going through this, in what ways are you thinking about this question in this direction and how is this um, experience offering a new insight or a new perspective so in this instance we're doing the pun on the obviously the four questions which are everywhere in judaism so given the new insights you may have discovered take a shot at answering the four questions and the way that we're going to do this well these are four that they've all been addressed in one way or another through different exercises on this spark um, are we're going to go through it in a minute I just, the closing point is this blessing, which is straight from Grace After Meals, but you've got on my own. May the compassionate one bless the master of their house and all that is theirs, which I find to be a very fitting quote um, to wrap up this whole notion on hospitality. But to get into these four, I'm actually, you know, we'll wrap up by getting back into the shared Google Doc where we started with those images and I'll repost the link in the screen. And if you go to that second page of the shared Google Doc, these four questions appear in four different um, sections. And um, the prompt is choose one of the questions 
and it's totally anonymous. I don't think your name appears and it doesn't need to, um, but put your uh, cursor next to one of the bullets and you may get pushed off. So just find one that works for you um, and add a new bullet if there's not enough, it doesn't matter, but choose a question to answer. And I'd love to hear your gut instinct reaction to one of these questions as a result of the last hour we spent together. So I am going to post the link to the, um, the that sheet in one minute. Um, I have a question. Sure. Like a pedagog, uh, more of a pedagogical question about this lesson plan. Is the objective of this lesson plan to become better hosts or better, or to learn about how? I mean, you know, that's my struggle always. The content, <laughs> heavy content, pulling back from the heavy content. Um, mm -hmm. the, so I the see objective of a spark. Can you go ahead. I see that these four questions at the end seem to be the goal of the lesson, right? The four questions at the end are ways that, given the resources and the prompts that were introduced earlier on, one is likely able to answer um, oh, something, one of these four questions, oh. because they've explored something that has to do with them. So the easy, you know, number two, how might you treat yourself as a guest going forward? That's clearly a connection to the whole bingo exercise, which is a question that was explored over there. So given any of that exploration, that's, that's something I may be thinking about different now. Um, to answer the question with any values exploration, our goal is to give as much content and direction and framing and also process for our learners to be able to focus on a value in a very specific way that's getting them to consider it um, in ways they hadn't necessarily considered it before by showing contemporary relevance or showing new sides of it. Like Robin said, I, I hadn't thought of it before in the lens of, you know, care for your responsibility, but this is now offering me a new perspective into something I, I definitely know a lot about. So that's the overall objective. Um, let me just open this so I'm on the same page as all of you with the Google Doc. And I'm scrolling down. There we go. Okay. Very cool. Just take one more minute to put something on if you haven't yet. And if you have already put it on here, see what other people have said. And see if, like, wow, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> Okay, and just again as a facilitation or a pedagogic note, if you have a group of 20 people and you genuinely want them to engage in one of these four questions, to do a round of it would take an hour, and to do it this way can take five minutes, and you can focus on however much, um, you know, the, the goal is that they engage with the question more so than everyone hearing how everyone else is engaging with it. So um, just as a, very much as a pedagogic shift for how to, how to do it kind of quickly. Um, and you can see what's there, um, clearly some insights and some takeaways and really some action items like ways to begin demonstrating hospitality. As a result of this, I will experiment and try out. Um, I don't think there's a better takeaway from the values exploration than saying, let me try something new <laughs> um, and put it to the test and see who am I as a host or as a guest and, and what am I learning about you know, this overall experience. Um, so with that, I'm gonna wrap up the, the Spark um, I'll open it for a couple of questions. I know that we're kind of out of time, so if you need to hop off, that's totally fine, but I'm happy to stay on for a few minutes if anyone has questions about this value or about Sparks in general. Um, but thank you for joining. And uh, oh, one more thing, you can count on these every week. Um, you can count on these every week for that week's issue, although it's gonna get tricky, so follow me for a second. We had a delay of a week in production, which means Today, a newsletter is going out in about 20 minutes with this week's spark. This week's spark is actually the spark of chesed, of loving kindness, which we did in last week's webinar. So there's already a recorded webinar for that. If you want to see a way to teach it, you can log on to our website and see it on the online gatherings page. That's there, which means this hospitality, when you're the only people who are receiving this, everyone else is only getting it in two weeks time. 
two weeks time because next week we're doing gratitude to align with our days of gratitude project. So long story short, in three weeks, you can count on these being synced that our weekly thing will be the day before, the same day that they're being released. For now, there's a bit of a catch up game. So enjoy being the first comers to hospitality. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining. Anyone who has questions, I'm staying on. Otherwise, thank you all. Good to see you. Robin, you're on mute. Thank you so much. Good, to see, Good to see you. Can you uh, right. talk, or are you guys going to do anything about how to use the gratitude stuff that you're putting out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, you didn't miss anything. Um, first of all, we're doing a spark in addition to gratitude on the value of gratitude. So next week's webinar will be just like this, about three specific activities in our format of a spark. So you'll definitely see that. Um, hold on, let me stop sharing the screen. Okay. So you'll definitely see that. Number two, in the Days of Gratitude website, there are going to be tutorials for every single day, meaning there's so much content that's being fueled into that. There's, I want to say, a total of 60 different activities over five days, but in a digestible way. You'll go into day number one. It's only going to be released day by day, so you can't get lost in it. And some of them is content we've developed. Some of it is content that partner organizations have developed um, all about different practices of gratitude. And they're each going to be centered on the, the different subjects or recipients of gratitude. So, you know, those who care for me, those who I live with, those who I yada yada, and those who I influence, like there's just different groups and that subjectivities are. Um, there will be tutorials online on the website. It's cool. Stay tuned. <laughs> Noah, David, questions? No, I just wanted to thank you, Kiva. I really appreciated it. Awesome. For sure. It's great to meet you. I hope to see you in person one day. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes. Yeah. This is incredible. Uh